Right, I thought we'd just have a bit of a recap of some of the key concepts behind the system identification concept and what could go right and what could go wrong. So what we're going to be having is a real control system running with a controller and we've got a real system here and we're going to arrange to put a set point change at the input V and that's going to run through the control system and it's going to generate an input change to the control input U which then generates a control in the output Y and we need to make sure when we're doing this that there's sufficient excitation so we don't want a little signal that does something like this and this just does something like that we need something that excites the system so we need like a good exciting signal here good exciting signal here so we can so we can excite all the modes inside the system the next thing that's going to happen is because it's a real system it's not going to start at zero so we're going to have some value here so USS another value here YSS and for system identification purposes we'll have to remove these values from this data so we'll subtract this value so it now starts at zero so it goes along and starts at zero because we've subtracted this from the data then the same thing here we've subtracted this from the data and we'll get something like So this time up, we'll do the same as that. Now, what we can do now is we can use a different methods for modeling the transfer function. So we could do trial and error, or we could use the MATLAB system identification toolbox. And one of the issues here now is we've got to choose the transfer function. So in the transfer function, GS, we've got zeros, and we've got poles, and so you've got to choose how many poles and zeros you have. Now, in simple systems, let's say first order, second or third order systems, you could, with no zeros, you could choose that. But if the system has some zeros in or is higher order, then it's quite tricky to intervene on a human level just to choose numbers. So then that's where the system identification package in MATLAB is handy because in this one you can choose how many poles and zeros you want and then that will have a good go at trying to find you a transfer function. The basic uh, way it does that is it generates a model of the system. It, it takes the same input now, the same input signal that you had in the real system, applies the same input signal to a model to give you a model output. So this will be, say, YR, this will be YM. Now, if it's a really good model, the shape here will be exactly the shape, same as this shape here. And at that point, you could say, well, we've now got a good model for that system. Now, it might not work. So you could get responses looking like this. Now, if it's very sort of constant and like this, this is indicating that maybe the system is rate limiting. So that means that it's got a maximum like amount it can it can go up. And so rather than sort of have a fast response, it might start to get itself got a constant rate, which is slower than the real system. This might indicate some degree of rate limiting. Or you might just get a response that's far too slow. Or you might get one that's like completely unstable or misbehaving. So if it's looking similar to the two, that's giving an idea that transformation is good. If you're getting a model mismatch, it's indicating that the model that you've chosen isn't really suitable. Now, there are lots of reasons for model mismatch. You could have the number of poles and zeros weren't correct. There might be some non-linear features in this system which aren't reflected in the model. And there are a number of non-linear features. The actuator here will have a saturation in. The system itself could have some non-linear properties. 
and the censoring system might not be totally doing it either. So there's quite a number of issues to take into account when you are looking at this. The controller in both cases is less liable to error because this is an algorithm and some software and so it tends to run the same every time. Um, typical things you might have here are what's called actuator saturations whereby the actuator has a maximum value and a minimum value. It's like driving a car, maximum value is when your foot is right down, minimum value is with your foot off, you can't control it outside those regions. So this is represented by a saturation effect. The system itself though could also have non-linearities in. The actuators themselves might not be perfectly linear. So most of the problem is going to come from non-linear properties. Another issue which you've got with non-linear properties is that if you double the size of the input step, if the output perfectly doubles, then you know that you're in a linear region. But what can often happen in a control system is you do one step, you get something like this, you double the step, and it doesn't perform the same way you'd expect it to be just twice as big, but it might do something like that, indicating now that the system has gone non-linear here. And so this data from this type of step response isn't really suitable for system identification. If you halve the step size, and it did halve this, so it did something like that, and this looked as if this was half of this, then this would indicate that you were in the linear zone. So it's quite a job to get yourself a good model here, and it involves quite a number of aspects which you could describe. Once you've got a model though, so when you've got the output here looking quite similar to the output here, got a good fit between the two, you've got some reasonable confidence then that your model is good. So if your model's good, you could come now to take your model and design a little controller in Simulink. So this could be done in Simulink. And then what you could do is you could use the MATLAB optimizer to optimize the controller. Now what that will do is that will give you a step response for the closed loop system whereby it's trying to really minimize this signal here. It's trying to minimize that area. So you should get a nice response from your simulation. Not something that looks a bit like, like that or like that. Something that's quite good in terms of a transit response. So this could be MATLAB optimized. And that'll give you a K hat of S. Now what you can do now is you can take this controller from your simulation and put it back into your real system. So this also now becomes K hat of S. So the controller here is the same as the controller here. And this is your predictive performance now. So if we now run this system for real, what we would hope to get, if, if the thing had worked well, then the transit response we get here would look exactly the same as what we've got here. So there'd be very little difference between the two. And then we could then claim that we've managed to obtain a model we then tune the model, use the tuned gains on the system itself, and got a good correspondence between the closed loop simulation and the closed loop real system. Again, what can happen is in the, in, in, in the real world, this might not work. So again, it's the same issues to do with modeling. There could be actuator saturations here. The system here might be a little bit non-linear in some of the actuators or some of the different aspects of it and the sensing value can go wrong as well and also you have to watch out for the size of the step so you've got to make sure that you're operating the system within its linear zone and those are the major issues I think to be covered in system identification and the use of modeling and simulation to design control systems so hope you find that, find that useful.
Okay, so this is just explaining how the MATLAB system identification toolbox works. And this is what the package front end looks like. To run it, you type in system identification with a little s there and a capital I here. You type that in at the MATLAB prompt and this thing then pops up. And from this, you can choose the number of poles and zeros you want in your transfer function. It'll have a go at working out then the appropriate transfer function for you. But before we do this, we have to have some data. So here's a little program now that I've set up to generate some data for us. It's got a PID controller in there. This box here is called a zero order hold and it makes the control system essentially digital. Now our control system running on the Arduino is digital and we have to watch out now. The main thing in this is we have to set the sample time. Now at the moment I'm setting it at 0 0.01, which is 10 milliseconds. I'm not exactly sure what the Arduino runs at, but it'd be between about 10 and five milliseconds. So you'd have to know that and type that in here. But for the moment we'll assume it's 0 0.01. And here is the transfer function now. Now this is my known transfer function. And in this particular case, it's like the example we've done. This is a continuous time transfer function, 2s plus 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. I can also add into this a bit of noise. But at the moment, I'm going to put zero noise in here. So I'll just put a zero in there. So it's got no noise. But you can add noise in to see the effect of noise on the accuracy of identifying the transfer function. Now the two things that are helpful is, this is the, I've got a PID in here. I've just chosen the PID so as I get a reasonable sort of transient response from the system. If we run the simulation, then this is the shape of the transient response. We don't want a flat one, we want one with a little bit of oscillation. So it's better to have a bit of oscillation for system identification. And here, um, this box needs carefully setting up. The sample time has to be set up. The variable has to be set up as an array here. And this is where you put the name in. So whatever name you put in there, you'll then get the name out dot, whatever that is. So if you call that Bill, it'd be out dot Bill. Um, or Ben, it'd be out dot Ben. Then when you've set all these things up, click on OK, and then do the same for this one. So I've got this Y. I've set it as an array and I've got the sample time as 0 0.01. If you get the sample times wrong, it'll all go wrong. Then when you run this simulation, what it does is it writes out.u and out.y into workspace. And then the system identification package then can use those bits of data to try and figure out this transfer function here. Now in the Arduino, we're gonna to have to convert this transfer function from a GS into a GZ. But that is in some PowerPoints, which will come to as well. So if we go back to here now, this is the MATLAB command, command line. If I print it here, out.u, then this is the signal there. So if I type in our system, the capital I, system identification, Press and enter and the package starts up. So here's the package here. So what we could do next is we've got to run the package. So go into import data and time domain data. And then you've got to put the names of the variables in workspaces. So it's going to be out dot u is the input and out dot y is the output. And go down here now, the sample time it needs to be set as well. 0.01. So we've got the variables right, time domain, and we click on the input button here. And that now imports the data. We can click close. So here's the data for us now. Now we forgot we can load in more data. And the data you want, you just click on this and drag it here. So in this case, we just drag that there, it's already done for us. Then we go into estimate now, and we go transfer function model, and now in this, 
you can choose the number of poles and zeros. So in our particular case, because we're cheating, we know it's got two poles and one zero. And the sample time is 0.01, so it's done it all for us. And we do click on now on the estimate button. And off it goes. And it comes up with a, have a go, has a go at the estimate. And you're looking for these numbers here to be quite small. They're small, like e to the minus 16. It's probably done an okay job. And close that. Then we go to here now. The system itself is called TF1 now. So if I click on here now, it now gives me the transfer function. So it's 2s plus 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2, which is what we had at the start, if you remember, when we were over here somewhere. 2s plus 1, s squared plus 3s plus 2. So it's all, it's all so it's essentially worked out the transfer function for us here. Yeah, I don't know if I can find it. Too much stuff going on here now. Here we are. Here's the transfer function. So this is what we're hoping to do um, in terms of, and it's also used uh, TF1 as if you click on export here, it will write TF1 into workspace for you. So if you do export, I clicked it twice, I didn't like it. Close that. If we then go back to MATLAB, and if we type in here now, TF1, then it's giving us some information, but not what I was expecting to see. Let's try ZPK TF1. There we go. So type in ZPK TF1, it now gives us the transfer function. So that's what it's identified, which is so we had. It's now blocked me off out of out of the thing, uh, which is a bit of a nuisance. I'm just going to close that down. Now, if we go back to here. In, in our particular case, it's going to work like this. But in a real system, you might have noise as well. So when noise system identification doesn't work quite as well. So if we put in, say, 0 0.02, that's 2% noise in here and now run this one now if we look at the output you can now see we've got a bit of a noisy signal um, there's a bit of noise on this and so this now will with noise in the system identification routine works but doesn't work as perfectly so this is also worth bearing in mind so go back to here now to our system identification and do import data so we've got a new set of data now, in time domain, sorry, and it's the same stuff. And so we import, and this time it's like representing it's a bit more noisy data. So we can drag that data down to here. So that's got it in here now, just dragged it across. Then we can do estimate and transfer function. And we go for two poles and one zero, same as did before, estimate. And then close and close that. So this is the new one, TF2 now. So if we now click on this one, you can see that it's not exactly two, and that's not exactly one, and that's not exactly two, and that's not exactly three. So it's not bad, but it's gone off a bit because of the noise. So noise can corrupt it slightly. The other thing you, in a real system, which you don't know, is you don't know how many poles and zeros to choose. So we could have chosen, for instance, three poles, three poles and say, and one zero, or no zeros even, so it's just three poles. So um, start again, transfer function, go to three and zeros. This is not, this is not the right sort of model now, is it? Three poles and estimate and um, this time you see some of these numbers here are quite big. They're not, they're not zero because it's not been able to do such a good job. So now if we look at this one, it's now come up with this model. So it's, it's probably not as good a model. Um, 
The only way to check out the model would be to take this model and run it alongside your simulation. So you could do that if you go down here. Just go up here and we do export. And it's called TF3, isn't it? So if we go into workspace here now um, and do ZPK TF3, then this is quite, this is modeled it. This isn't too far off, is it? S squared plus 3S plus 2. It's got a pole here, almost at the origin. And uh, this game has lost a zero here, so it's, it's had a go, but probably this model now isn't that good. Um, if you want to see how good the model was, you'd have to go back to here and put it in here. Um, or ideally, put another model, put the model in, alongside it here. So put a little copy this, feed this into this, and feed that into there. Um, and unfortunately, the university is trying to get me to. And I doesn't like it. Come back later. And it come back later, shall we? Let me just show you what I mean. So, so we took this and did a copy. And then did a paste. Oh, this university stuff now is getting out of control. Paste. Um, we could put that, say, there. Then we'd feed this the same signal as we've got into there. And it's the scope. Um, um, just keep it on trying now. I'll have to get the numbers for it. Um, let's just go to the scope. And the signals and ports. And uh, numbers of ports too. And then connect that up into there like that. So what happens at the moment, that both these models are the same. So when we run it, we get the two outputs are sitting on top of each other. Um, but if we change this now to what we had before from the uh, system identification, let's have a look where that was. Uh, go back to the workspace. Here we go. So it's, I'll just write these numbers down. 0.26 one seven over s set we'll say that number's on the zero s squared plus two point naught a s plus four point nine one so we can try and put this transfer function now to see how good it was so this is going to be top line is going to be um naught point two six one seven Let's get rid of this stuff. 0.2617. And then the bottom line is going to be 1, 2 .08, 4 .90. And That'll give me the right effect. Um, it should be. Make this bit box a bit bigger eventually. So there's the. This is what essentially the system identification came out with almost that transfer function. And if we run this now, now look at this. You can see it was a pretty bad fit. So sometimes if you overestimate things, it doesn't work either. So in this case, it when we went for just three. So so if you don't know how many poles and zeros you've got. You would have to sort of play about with the number of poles and zeros. Eventually, maybe when you chose one zero and two poles, you'd found you get the best fit. So but you don't have to worry about that in your particular case, because you know what this is, and therefore you know how many poles and zeros to choose. So that's just giving you a little overview that sometimes it doesn't work. It doesn't always work perfectly. Noise messes it up and also if the number, if you don't choose the right number of poles and zeros, that can also mess it up. Um, if we went, 
if you had one mile, it would go like this. If we go estimate transfer functions, we could go for, say, two poles and three or two zeros and three poles. So it's like overestimating what we're doing. Uh, and so it's back to front. So that should be number of poles was three, because I wasn't reading properly. And the number of zeros was two. So we'll estimate that. And then close. And then this is this one here. So you now click on this one. Then let's come up with this. So the trouble with this now is because it's coming back as a fact, it's not factorized. So you can't really tell what's going on. So if you do export to, let's pull this up a bit here, export, and it's called TF4. So now we're going to workspace and we now do ZPK, ZPK TF4. Then this is what we've got. So we've got an S squared. Again, it's not done the great job, has it? Difficult to say how good that is, really. So you can see, uh, in general, using this is not such a good demonstration now. This is it as I thought it was going to be. Uh, hang on, cancel. Let me just go back to this again. Let's put the noise down to zero. That might give us a better chance. So if we run, run this again, that's with no noise. Go back to here, do import data, time domain, import, close, and that's this one here, drag this one into here. Then do estimate transfer function model. This time we're going to go for three, three and two. That's three poles, two zeros. Do an estimate. These look numbers quite look quite small now, so it looks quite promising. And then this is TF5. So this is TF5 now. So it's got two zeros and three poles. But again, the problem is you can't tell what they are. So if we do export. And then close this down. Then we go back to here, go into the workspace. If I now do ZPK, which is ZPK TF5, I can't remember what it's called now, but anyway, I hope this one. So this time, it's come up with these two have cancelled perfectly. And then there's S plus 2, which is S plus, that gives us the S squared, sorry about this. That gives us the S squared plus 3S plus 2, and there's the 2S, so it's actually worked this time. So if it's overestimated the poles and zeros, and when that happens, you get a pole zero cancellation. So let's see if you overestimate the poles and zeros perfectly, you get a pole zero cancellation if there's no noise. If there's noise in there, they won't cancel, and so it'll make this transfer function more complicated again. But I think the main point is that you can use this package quite simply to use it as a verification tool. So you can put a G, choose a GS, convert it to a GZ, put that into the Arduino, run all the programs, collect the data, run it through this package, package, and it should then work out the same GS that we started off with. And that'll then verify that what you've done is correct. And you can use all of these scre screenshots and different features here to show it's correct and it'll look quite smart in a report. So that's, uh, that's it.